Hi there, Stitchers. This is Suzanne in Ohio. Well, I have the beginnings almost halfway through my page for February, and I wanted to show you my ideas as they're coming together. I think some things might interest you. So, um, first of all, this is my page, and um, what I did was I had a piece of fake French toile and it was printed on cream and black, very black. And I thought, oh, that's just too black for me. So I chose the part of the scene that I wanted and put it on my uh, scanner screen and copied it off onto fabric. Now, I didn't run my own fabric through. I have some of those you know, pre-prepared pre pieces that you can run through your computer, and I used that. And I printed it off in a more of a dark sepia color rather than stark black. And so as my ideas came together, what I wanted to do was just enhance some parts of the scenery because I'm going to use the bottom half those are at the top. I'm going to use the bottom half uh, to tell a little story. And here's my story. Um, th this is, of course, a love scene. And he's wooing her with a basket of apples. And I just wanted to enhance their faces. I'm going to bring you down a little bit because I want to show you how I did uh, some of that stitching. Oh, let me get my find my cursor here. The cursor's all over the screen sometimes, and it's an extra large monitor, and I can't always find it. But okay, that's as far as it's going to let me go, I think. But what I wanted to show you was I've told you before, this is all about the stitches for me. Uh, let me take this autofocus off because it's trying to. And I'll see if I can show you his hat and her hair. That's what really tickled me because let me put my hand in here and see if this camera wants to focus better. Well, it's just not. Okay, let's try the autofocus on again. And maybe there's too much white in the screen. Oh shucks. I'm sorry it won't give you a better picture of that because there it's coming in just a little bit better. I'm trying to use the stitches that Rachel and Sarah have showed us and I'm on YouTube exploring and seeing what other things out there in the world of embroidery that I have missed. So um, I wove his hat for the most part and I put that little feather coming out of there and then I made her hair out of bullion knots and French knots and it just turned out so cute it makes me laugh every time I look at it then I just did an assortment of other stitches on their clothing just enough to give you an idea that they're alive and uh, did her dress in shades of pink, his white collar, uh, his blue jacket, and then it just graduates down to nothing, back into the original photograph, or print. But here's my idea, because it is a scene, um, hold on, not going to respond. Okay, it's a scene, and I thought about fancy flowers and a tussy mussy and I think I have an, something interesting to tell you about tussy mussies but first I'll show you my version of a tussy mussy and I just cannot get this camera to back out it would be more in focus if it did oh finally it just decides to respond whenever the heck it wants to take this away just so you can see that so I'll put this on a light background. So what I did was created a little foundation 
and I had some dyed cheesecloth or gauze, really. It was gauze. And all kinds of little shreddy scraps of torn whatever, whatever I'm working with. And <clears throat> I covered it with all of this to simulate moss. And I'll explain that why I did that in a minute. And then I rolled it up, and I haven't stitched it yet down the back, but I will. And my idea is uh, Tussie Mussies were full of flowers, so I thought I would lay this on here and have flowers bursting out the top of the Tussie Mussy. So where am I going to get the flowers? Well, I have to embroidery them. And how am I going to get them to come out of this Tussie Mussy? Okay, I'll show you that in a second. But let me give you a little history of uh, Tussie Mussies. Now, it's I did a lot of research years ago because I was making Tussie Mussies, large ones to hang on the wall. And <clears throat> the research goes... Of course, you can get anything online, but the one I thought was the most true, <coughs> excuse me, was uh, the one that talked about the origin of the name. Now, nobody knows how far back these goes, probably to prehistoric times. But the word tussy was traced back to the word tussle, which meant cluster, and such as, a, you know, um, tassel. Uh, but it means a cluster. And mussy was traced back to the original word of moss. So probably the very first time somebody brought somebody flowers from the woodland, it was the stems were wrapped in moss. So tussy mussy. Now, they became all very popular in the early Victorian era and all through Europe and Britain because of the interest in the language of flowers. Every flower had a meaning. Even plants had a meaning. For instance, just a leaf, a sprig of sage or a sprig of rosemary. Everything had a meaning. So um, we don't stop to think about it in this day and age, but people didn't always have pencil and paper. That was, that was a luxury. So if you want to send somebody a message, and it was very popular and continued for hundreds of years, you would send them a bouquet of flowers because they all knew what each flower represented. So in my imagination, this young man is bringing this woman a tussy mussy full of flowers that will say what he wants it to say for her. So... That's your history right there. And I wanted to uh, do the moss-looking Tussie Mussie because that would have been the original. The newer ones or the more popular ones in the Victorian era turned into anything from leather, fabric, paper, metal, wood. And we tend to call those nosegays. But uh, the original Tussie Mussie was wrapped in moss. So please imagine that that is the moss that's going to wrap around the flowers. So what I did was I took my embroidery hoop and I laid this on here and got an approximate size and then with my invisible pen or erasable pen I drew out first of all this which will stuff down into the tussy mussy and then the flowers bursting out the top. So I, okay, ignore this mushroom for the minute. I've got a cute story about that. But the flowers came together pretty darn good. And what I did was I had a basic drawing at first, but I didn't follow it exactly. In some places I did. But you can see over here, I'm just going to run the iron over that and erase that. But as I was on YouTube looking up all these stitches, I thought, oh my gosh, I wish I could do some of those. So this is my first try ever. 
at things like this. Um, and I'll explain it to you a little bit. The rose is done with a cast on stitch. And I did use yellow variegated even though it doesn't show up a lot. But in real life you can see it. I did these little clusters of what I thought might look like oh, uh, mulberries really. And I did those with the cast on stitch. See this and this is the same stitch. And look what different things you can do with it. And this, the white, which I thought looked like baby's breath, and these, which I don't know, some flower I made up in my brain, those look like, or those are all the cast on stitch. And I went to several different videos to see how it was done. And uh, once I could get my brain to coordinate and do what they what you're supposed to with your hands, I was able to uh, do that stitch. For me, learning something is a repetition until I've created a neuro pathway that really works. Also, I wanted to try this Pico stitch. And what it is, is a way, it's actually weaving, but in such a way that it's only anchored at the bottom. And so these petals are free floating. I mean you can you can lift them up and you can push them with your finger and kind of bend them. Uh, you could even put a few little stitches in them if they weren't sticking you know staying where you wanted them to. Okay so uh, I'm going to press off all of this and cut these out as close as I can to the embroidery. Now my foundation fabric and my backing, which I have a stabilizer be behind this, a pretty medium firm. Uh, it's just a piece of non-woven like Pellon and I knew I needed it to support all this weight and keep things where they're supposed to be. So I'm going to cut it out as close as I can and then I will be stuffing that down inside the Tussie Mussie. Now I wanted something on the outside of my Tussie Mussie. So what I did was I saw Sonia Steppo and she was making a leaf um, in a certain version of stump work. I've looked at stump work online before and it seems too advanced for me. I didn't think I could do it. But uh, she showed doing a completely freeform leaf, which looks the same on the back and the front. You can turn it over and stand it up on your piece of embroidery. Go to her channel and look at that. She's working on that for her February page in the journal. So I wanted something to put on the front of my little Tussie Mussy here. Uh, and a string that like ties it on. So I decided to do this mushroom and this is a type of stump work. It's not the kind you can turn over and look at the back of it, although I'll show you the back. So that's pretty ugly. You don't want to look at that. But what it amounts to is you put a framework of wire on the outside of your image and you stitch it down with a tiny little tacking stitch all the way around. And then the tutorial that I followed, because I was doing a tiny bit different than Sonia, uh, you do a blanket stitch all the way around your image. And then you begin, I begin to fill it in with what's called long and short stitch. So I'm going to completely cut out this mushroom and I'm going to mount it as if it's tied under the string on the front of the Tussie Mussie. And then I begin to think, well, what else can you find in a woodland setting? You could find a leaf or something, of course. Uh, you could find insects, but I didn't want to do that. Uh, but we have enough leaves and flowers coming out of the top of the Tussie Mussie. So I thought, oh, you could find a bird feather. So I have some feathers and I'm going to mount it 
right on that tussy mussy. It'll kind of look like that. And the mushroom on top of it and tie it up with a string. So the flowers will come out here. And if I have to downsize this tussy mussy a little bit, I will. Now one last um, thing I'll say is up here in this blank space, I'm going to write on it, I'll embroider it, language of flowers. And that tells the whole story. So now, um, what will I do with all this weight on this page and everything? I'm going to put a piece of buckram canvas on the back of it. And I'll show you. Hold on. I spoke about that before because when I completed my title page, I, I sewed it all down to a piece of buckram canvas that I found at the thrift store. And I've got just enough to do this page also. Maybe I'll have to be going looking for more because if all my pages end up this heavy and this bulky, uh, I'll have to have something to back it with. But that's my ideas, your little story about Tussie Mussies. And it's just going to be so cute, I think. So I hope you're all stitching along. Can't wait till tomorrow to f see what the prompt for March is. So here we go into another month. Now, girls or guys, whoever's stitching, let's be honest with each other. This stuff takes so long. I work three days on my Baltimore Oriole. And I worked a whole day on this mushroom because I got smart and I used two or three strands instead of one. Um, but I'm so glad to be forced to learn these stitches. So I've heard a story one time about a little old lady, two sister-in-laws, and every year they would order one of those pre-printed quilts that you um, it came, uh, it's called, you know, a one piece quilt top with all the stamping already on it as to where you were s supposed to stitch all your applique pieces. And they, the kits always came with the applique pieces already cut out. And the one sister-in-law was telling me that her, the other sister-in-law's husband hated to see one of those come in the mail because he knew he wasn't going to get any meals or anything done till she got that quilt top done. And she would, they would call each other up every day to talk about their progress. And she'd say, oh, I've got all the red pieces done. I've got all the yellow pieces done. She wouldn't cook, clean, do dishes, nothing while she was working on that quilt. Well, I said to that lady who was telling me the story, I said, well, that would be me. <laughs> because once you get started, you can't wait to see the next phase. All right. Maybe, I don't know how, if you're finding time to do anything else, I don't know how. Um, probably this is the best time in my life for, to be doing this because um, I I have a lot of responsibilities here, but not not as if I had my own house and keeping it for now. As soon as I move out again, find a place in my favorite little town, I'll have to get back on the ball and there won't be any time for all this. But isn't it wonderful? All right, guys, listen, thanks for watching. I can't wait to see more pictures. If you're stitching, please post your photographs on the Facebook group. Get in there and join that and then be inspired by every wonderful thing on there. And I will see you again probably in just a day or two with this finished page. All right. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed anything, give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you want to. And let's all be YouTube friends. Bye for now.